quarterback fans, college football fans in general, welcome to another QB Spotlight podcast episode, YouTube show, whatever it is you want to call it. This is a place where we do all things quarterback. This is a quarterback hub, and we do quarterback content on a weekly basis. I'm your host, Stephen Hamner. we got App State quarterback, Brady McBride co-host and we're just here to talk all things quarterback right it's just a quarterback hub we like to have it a welcoming uplifting place and talk about our favorite position on a you know weekly basis and today we're super excited to have another guest second guest of the podcast and that is unt quarterback trencher from ulm chandler rogers we're pumped to have him on he's got a lot of good stuff to say a lot of good advice to to the younger generation but brady what was your kind of takeaways from from the interview with chandler i know he's one of your peers and mm-hmm. you know i think you're maybe a year or two older than him but still you know y'all are still in that same kind of generation yeah definitely coming out i heard of him and uh maybe had like one prior conversation but it was awesome to just pick his brain and hear what he had to say about the position and how he plays it how he perceives it and as a quarterback you're always looking to get better yeah, well, yeah, it was, got time to play, so yeah, it was a, it was a fun combo. We were able to get kind of some X's and O's, talk about kind of like favorite favorite route concepts against defenses and different schemes and whatnot. So it was a, a lot of fun. But enough of us talking. Let's go ahead and get into this interview with North Texas quarterback Chandler Rogers. Chandler, what's up, dude? We're so happy to have you on on, on the show. Uh, for those who don't know, me and Chandler go back a few years. Uh, I guess when he just got was a senior in high school. Is that right? Yeah. Going into yeah, going to Southern Miss. Yeah. And uh, we just communicated some on Twitter, and uh, we were able to do some like film breakdowns and this, yeah. this that kind of stuff with Chandler. So we're super happy to have him on. We stayed in touch. Chandler, I've been a fan of you since since then, since we talked, and now uh, you know rooting for you now at North Texas. So I'll kind of give a brief you know introduction of how me and Brady met, Chandler, just so you kind of have an idea. So Brady, uh, when he was in the transfer portal last year from Texas State before we Dap State. Uh, he, he started training with us. Uh, we had that, our NFL offseason going. We were looking for a quarterback to to give our guys a, a look. And uh, so he was teammates with one of the guys when he was at Memphis and came. And, and since right. then, we've, we've kind of been, been uh, you know, kind of kind of together, uh, if, if you will. That's not the best way to put that. But We've been locked in. <laughs> we've been locked in, yeah. And so, uh, but yeah, dude, we're super happy to have you on. And, and this is just like a – this is just a quarterback hub, right? Where we just, it's, it's all things, everything quarterback. So once you're on the first time, you're, you're welcome any and every time. So we're happy to have you on, man. How was, uh, how was Denton treating you right now? Uh, Denton's treating me very well. You know, it's a family environment. And I mean, they welcome you up in arms. And, you know, secondly, I'd like to thank y'all for having me here mm-hmm. and just, you know, to, uh, talk with me, you know, like you said, quarterback friendly zone. Um, and just having a great conversation. Yeah. Because we all know, I mean, and especially y'all, y'all are so much successful than me. Quarterback's tough. I mean, it's one thing to to be an armchair quarterback, but when you're in the pocket and you got bullets coming at you, it's uh, oh, yeah. it's a little bit a little bit easier to uh to to hit the X run down the field on Madden than it is in, in the actual game. So, <laughs> yeah, we just wanted to be like a good good safe space for us and uh, uh, just an encouraging encouraging environment man so we're we're excited for uh to, to watch you with the with the mean green this year i know yeah, brady will be playing but i'll be watching both of y'all so <laughs> no i'm gonna peep i'll be uh, there definitely gonna keep up a break yeah hey maybe yeah. maybe y'all get a get a bowl game against each other or something that'll be fun to watch hey. yeah yeah <laughs> i need i need to go to a bowl i went my freshman year with memphis and been dry ever <laughs> since <laughs> <laughs> I need those. I need those bowl gifts. A little bit of money. And bowl gifts, rings. Chandler, no, uh, no bowls for you. Have no bowls. No. So went events. to uh, my freshman year went to all first <laughs> bowl, and then I mean, we fell short to play Tulane. Was um, that in Dallas? It was. We played at TCU. That's nice. Yeah, you got so, to see the folks at home. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah I remember. After that, it's been been a drought. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. I remember when those bowl gifts came around. I, I had no clue what was even going on. They put us in that like room, mm-hmm. so they, and then did they do like a point system? Yeah, we had the points. So yeah. like some some gifts were like six points, and I think yeah. we had we had twelve because it was like a conference championship and a and a bowl or something. And like you could use all six of your points on like the the TV or the recliner or the cooler, and then they had little stuff. But I remember <laughs> I I got my my brother and sister, I think, uh, Christmas gifts with it. So wasn't necessarily coming out of pocket, but I was definitely. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I've been seeing these guys bogus. I mean, hey, that, that, that's a pretty nice bogus. I ain't gonna lie. Everybody got the same thing. So, I mean, yeah. You, you can only yeah. imagine, like, the, the college football playoff. Oh, my gosh. 
And then uh, the year the I think it was when the PS5 came out, the nobody could, yeah they 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 couldn't find the Playstations. Yeah, but didn't they all the what was it PlayStation Fiesta Bowl? Mm-hmm. They all everyone got a PS5 free, free. <laughs> and then if you want to real resell that, that goes up for like a thousand. Yeah. Sheesh. Well, so I'm, I'm not a gamer, and and I never made a bowl game. Um, on, no. <laughs> Taylor, ready hears me hears me tell the story like every time but my only touchdown in college was to the other team uh and i shortly got moved they changed me positions because they figured out i couldn't throw the ball but un- unlike unlike me y'all two both can and, and challenge real quick just to give like a brief background of your history um start at southern miss and then did you go to straight to ulm did you go to blend and then ulm i went from southern miss to blend then right and them so just the transition from Blin, um, Southern Mr. Blinn was that was before the one time waiver. Okay. Where you were able to transfer. So you had to get a waiver in order to transfer to another university. And they didn't give it to me. So I was forced to go to junior college. Okay. Mm. That's what. That's how the situation happened. And just, oh, wow. uh, Coach Mayhan, after conversations with him, I mean, I just felt comfortable enough to go to Blinn. And the history they have there, I knew some people who played there. And they, I mean, they said nothing but good things. So, um, yeah. Brenham is is like a it's like a gold mine I'd say because it's the location it's close to Houston, yep. you're close to um, Texas A and M if you want to go over there if you San Houston State, yeah. and, you know just the location and I mean I met a lot of great people there people that I still talk to to this day, yeah I mean that was just you know so far that's been the best experience for college for me, the blend the blend year oh yeah interesting. And and then from Blend, then you stayed there one year, then went to ULM, ULM correct? Mm-hmm. Yes, went to ULM. Um, it was interesting because of COVID and not having camp. So as soon as it the camps opened up in June, I went to their camp, and it was like a transfer portal camp. And you know they invited those who who they wanted to see, and they I mean they gave me opportunity to come, and I took it, and I got there two weeks later after the camp. So I was there in July, and I had a, a month before camp to learn everything and yeah. go through it. And just ever since then, when Rhett, 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 when Rhett went down, took over and won some games. Yep, um, yep. Yeah, yeah no, you, you did. Came you, and it's been good. You did more than one game. I think, I think, and hopefully you know this uh, on the dot, I think you had the past two years 30 total touchdowns. Is that correct? You, you, you know, That's top of your head? Stuff. Yeah, so you thirty total thirty total touchdowns. That's that's nothing to sniff at at, at the Division One level. So that's that's a a, a feat in itself. Uh, but especially last year, because last year we were talking about this before we got on air. Last year, y- y- y'all schedule consisted of Alabama, Texas. Y'all played the Sun Belt, which is arguably the the best Group of Five conference, or was last year, right? You can make that argument that they were one of the best Group of Five conferences out there right the tough schedule so y'all played like right. south alabama coastal carolina south alabama i think they 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 went to the Sun Belt championship is that right yeah and, and, right. and i think so y'all, y'all story, should know y'all, uh, yeah. story and coastal okay i'm tripping well they had a good season yeah, oh, yeah. We'll, we'll leave it at that we'll have a good season um so going back to to the season before we kind of jump some unt stuff what are a few games that kind of like just stick out to you that 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 for whatever reason, whether it was good, bad, just a few games that stick out from the 2022 season at ULM. Uh, 2022, um, definitely, I would have to say from Nickel State game, um, just I felt that really set the tone of the potential that we could have against anybody. Um, we had a slow first quarter, but after that, we were rolling in. They could stop us. Um, the next game would be Coastal, even though we lost. I mean, just – Statistically wise, I mean, I was twenty-seven or thirty. Mm, jeez, I mean, um, that was I had a game like that in high school. We only had one completion, but doing that at a collegiate level against Coastal Carolina, that's, I mean, that's that says something. And then was that at um, Coastal? It was, was. It was our homecoming game. Okay, was, homecoming game. Um, this year, going to Georgia State and winning our first road game since twenty nineteen. So. That was wow. definitely something that was big for us. Um, South Alabama. Yep. Um, that set a career high through for 371, four touchdowns. Mm. Um, and another one, Texas State. We were down 21 0, first quarter. Came back one. Wow. So, I mean, 
Yeah, I it's remember definitely, following that game. Definitely highs and lows throughout yeah. the season. But, I mean, I feel like our record doesn't show how good we were. Y'all had some close yeah. losses, too. Like, exactly. it wasn't – like, I feel like y'all are – the, the the game against Coastal in South Alabama, if I remember correctly, we're all like within a touchdown or so. Oh yeah, yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, yeah. Some close games and, and uh, what what was the what was the, the the difference like whenever you play? Let's go into detail. Like whenever you play like a, like a Coastal or South Alabama, what's the environment like compared to like a Nickel State? You know, Nickel State being a, a lower a FCS school, and then you have the bigger schools coming in. Is there was it a different environment? Was it like preparation different at all is it kind of the exact same regardless we prepared the same yeah. um, as anybody so just playing those teams in conference i feel the intensity in the game is a lot more because i mean the stakes are higher mm-hmm. right um, just playing those teams i mean i feel talent wise that coastal and, and troy because south alabama those guys i mean they have better talent because i mean troy has i mean one of the best defenses in the nation i mean anybody they play they struggle to score the ball. Yep. And then you have Coastal High-powered offense with uh, Grace McCall. So, I mean, mm. you have that guy, and then you put talent around him. I mean, they have a stable running back, so they're able to throw and run the ball. Mm. And you have South Alabama, who just, I mean, came out of nowhere offensively and yeah. lit it up. I mean, they almost beat UCLA. Yeah. So, I mean, week in and week out, you're playing great competition. Yeah, yeah. Carter Bradley, I think, for the quarterback for South Alabama, had a hell of a season. Mm. Came out and did his thing. Uh, based on the the teams last year in the Sun Belt, would you consider Troy as the hardest hitting team? Hardest hitting is Georgia State. Georgia State, nah, yeah, and they talk the most, huh? <laughs> hardest hitting is Georgia State, and I figured that out in twenty one. Because oh my gosh, after really? that game, I was definitely sore. Did they talk to you a lot? Oh yeah. Yeah, you know they didn't they stop, bro. <laughs> you know how they are. From the yeah. first play, bro. And then even after the game, they're ready to go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, definitely after the game because we got into it. Really? Did you did you uh, like playing in that stadium? It was definitely a cool experience, especially in the old ballpark. I mean, mm-hmm. Their facility, the entire facility is in there, so they practice there, lift weights, film. I mean, everything is there. So it's definitely cool. I mean, I got videos and pictures of, of the stadium, so that was definitely a memory I could keep. Yeah. It was cool, and they had that little middle school, uh, yeah, middle school bleachers kind of thing. But it was still cool, just like looking yeah. up, and you see just it's a big old stadium. Yeah, the stadium inside the stadium. <laughs> I'm sh- I'm sure everyone uh, like when you're walking in for that pregame walk, walking the field, like right when you walk through through on the stadium, everyone's yeah, you know, 100%. Sh- 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 I was one of them. <laughs> yeah. No, I was too. I was too. Brady, did y'all play them when you were at Texas State too, or just after? Uh, yeah, Texas State. Okay, um, that was my last start. My last time I started the game was at Georgia State. Uh, they twisted my ankle, so like, you know I got that foot. Yeah, they were just twisting my ankle like Man. on a touchdown, and I was like, oh. and so <laughs> it was too too they sore to play anything. the next game. They do anything. <laughs> okay, so. On that, how did let's go to like both of you? How did y'all play against them? If they're, they're, they're you know, they're hitting hard, they're, they're talking a lot. Like, did y'all have good games against them? What was the outcome? I did, yeah. Um, 21, we had two fumbles, and that decided the game, okay. Because I mean, they capitalized and scored touchdowns every time. Um, this year, it was, it was definitely harder because offensively we would drive but we couldn't put it in zone so it came down to a two-point conversion that we had to get in order to win the game because hey shout out quay drake he had a pick six and he had a block punt return for six let's mm. go yeah that's big then, i mean without them they would have won i mean because they are there i mean they had like 350 yards passing Dang. And you talking about Georgia State, who's not for running the ball? They really don't throw the ball. Yeah. So for them to have that many passing yards, it was okay. We had to pick it up offensively. I mean, there was a couple calls that nobody agreed with. Yeah. Always are. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah, we're in Atlanta. It was one of them. It was one of them type of days. And towards the end, it was got chippy. How did you play? Was that a good game you had? Were you like physically like, man, I'm smoked? Like, was that just to find a way that, to get in it? In 21, done? without a shot of a doubt, I was, yeah. I was hurting. I mean, yeah. 
And the next day, I couldn't even move my neck. Yeah. And, um, this year, I, I felt better because, I mean, I had that year all season. Right. Um, built my body back up. And a couple times, I, I delivered a hit to them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So if you, you don't want to get hit, deliver the hit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Brady, what was how, what was your body feeling like after playing them? How was your game against them? Well, I didn't play for the rest of the year, so I was hurt, and then I never got back in, and so yeah, that was it. That was the last time I was the guy for wow. the game. And, I didn't, but, I didn't even know that. Yeah, this is cool, cool experience. I liked playing them. Yeah. So yeah, Atlanta's always fun too. Did y'all um, did y'all stay downtown? We did. Stayed off Peach Peachtree. Yeah, did y'all like? Are y'all allowed to like explore at all? Like walk around or no? It's pretty strict. We we walked around the hotel a little bit, but I mean, just as far as we were not allowed to be the hotel or anything. So yeah, I remember uh, I took a little bird. Just kind of we had a, some time off, and we could we could go explore a little. We, mm. we took a little bird, like the scooter. Yeah, <laughs> and I got finesse like twenty bucks off this homeless dude. And it was just like. That's crazy. Apparently, he was telling the same story to everyone, and I fell for it. And I was like, "God, man, that pissed me See, off." For us, we had some we had some teammates from Atlanta, so they they were able to bring Atlanta to us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, could, they could give you a little warning. Oh, yeah, they know, gave we don't really have that. What uh, take us take take us through your your, your top two plays, your top two favorite plays that come to your mind so far your college career, and like take us through the situation. Mm-hmm. What the defense was doing, just just like your reads, kind of go into some some details, some weeds for us, getting the X's and O's for us. <sighs> um, one comes to mind because just as a quarterback, if you run somebody over, you gotta talk about it. Come on. So let's talk about uh Nickel State. So it was a uh, 12 personnel there in the bare front, um, reading a D gap in zone. Um tight ends coming around. He's he's Bypassing the D gap, going up to the next level. So I pull it, I take it to the next level. Safety comes, he tries to hit me, I run him over. So I mean, that's something I'm definitely gonna remember because yeah. that whole that whole off season, that whole spring, going to fall camp, I was like, I'm going to run somebody over. Yep. I'm going to run. I'm I'm, I'm putting it into existence. And I did. Come on, yeah. And then another play I remember was the two point conversion um, against Georgia State. It was, it was sprint out. Um, the rubbery where it's a pick play and you have somebody coming underneath. And they traded it all day. They called it out because we ran it a couple times. Yeah. So uh, I had to back up, find somebody. Shout out Jeff for going back in zone, threw it up, he toe tap. Come on. So, I mean, just those are definitely two plays from this past mm-hmm. season because the yeah. one from Georgia State, that's the one that won the game. You know, I was like, wow. first over. So that definitely meant a lot to us. And just that was a hard fought game. Yeah. That was a good, good, good uh, flight home, huh? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, hey, yeah. did you get in the end zone when you ran that dude over? Hundred percent. Let's go. Hey, you got, you got, you got to send that, send that film to us. Maybe we'll put it as like our thumbnail or something. Oh, I will. <laughs> oh, I will. <laughs> what was the Sally? I flexed on. Flex. <laughs> oh yeah, flexed on. Oh, yeah. Hey, have y'all ever had a? Have you already had a play? Successful play. And like you do some taunting or do something, and then you look and you see there's a flag, and you gotta pick it up and and, and walk it back ten. That ever happened to y'all? Yeah, yeah. We had a couple run plays like that, and it was like, because oh. they were big gainers. I mean, one of them scored, and we had to bring it back. Yeah, after you're already going through the celebration, yeah, that's not fun. I I uh, I was never that good to have that celebration in college, so I wouldn't know. But um, <laughs> I usually just kept it pretty sneaky. <laughs> yeah, and it would depend. Like if they're if they're talking first, like I'm probably gonna engage in it a little. Just I'm, I'm not just gonna do it right in front of the ref, just kind of in his ear kind of deal. Yeah. No. Nah, yeah. 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 You sometimes, sometimes I'll I'll go to the line. And I'll point at him like I'm coming at you. <laughs> That's hard. I never done that. Not yet. You haven't done it yet. Um, <laughs> I probably still won't do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I'll do that, but I mean, it depends. Yeah. Because I mean, I remember twenty one play App State. I got knocked out of the game because they hit my arm, and my arm went numb. They hit, the, hit me dead on my nerve. Mm. On I your mean, elbow or like shoulder? On my shoulder. Oh. Like I threw the ball, it hit me dead on my shoulder. I was like, whoa. Yeah. And then I go back out there, and it was like a running play. 
uh, sprint out, just fourth down. So I land on top of somebody. I keep running. They don't blow the whistle. I go and score. And I land on my shoulder again. I was done. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Just, uh, I, I won't forget it because it was number 52, the linebacker. Um, he got drafted, yeah, he got drafted. He was, he was, he was a really good player. Yeah. I mean, that, that, that our state environment is definitely different. Yeah. That's what it's that's, uh, yeah. Uh, Chandler, what, what are a few, uh, just like kind of stay in the X's and O's here, go through like like one or two um, offensive concepts or plays that you just like, you just feel really comfortable, whether it's like a smash, smash concept, RPO, whatever it may be, just kind of go through and take us through a, a few, one or two uh, concepts where you just like, when, when the play caller calls it in, you're like, damn, let's go. Like, I feel good about this. Without a doubt, Y cross and any variation. I mean, it beats every single coverage. Take take us through. Man, take, yeah. You want to run man, you can take the vertical, or you have a man being route. Um, the zone, depending on the coverage, keep your eyes on the corner. Possibly a whole shot with the vertical, or you throw the out route. Um, the crosser, I mean, maybe the wheel linebacker, or the safety expands with the out. You get the crosser. I mean, and then you have the post or post curl. I mean, the high school ran a post. College level, I ran post curl, so cover three. Post or curl's nice. Quarters, I mean, like, yeah, especially in quarters, you can hollow the safety with the post because if he's flat footed or if he's triggered down over the top every time. Well, and well, then, what you know, a lot of people forget the running back as well. So, what what do you, what's the running back usually do for y'all? Yeah. He takes swings. swings. Check swing. Yeah. Towards the post curl. Mm-hmm. Check swings yeah. to the field all the time. So, I mean, when in doubt, the running back's probably open nine times out of ten. Mm hmm. I, I I don't get it because you see him in the backfield. Now you don't see him back there, so he's got to be somewhere. Yeah. Um, yeah. Another another concept that I've grown to like, um, uh, we call it a double smash here, Um It's just I mean smash both sides, yep. but uh, out of the empty set. Because I mean one high, I'm playing smash in the boundary. Mm-hmm. Two high, I'm playing middle of the field because we have something going down the middle of the field to see. Mm-hmm. So yep. I can get him for a touchdown, and then I have another crossing rock coming underneath him. Do either of y'all's, whether it's a smash concept or just just a, a play in general, do they have like your slot guy? Do they will they have an option like depending on where the safety is, or do you throw them right? So like, are they going like they going towards the pylon, or you flatten them out a little bit? Like if it's if it's too high or or whatever it may be, do they have that option, or is it up to like y'all to kind of throw that? Does that make sense? So you talking about the scene? Yeah, or, or just the, 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 the corner route, like in general. Oh, the does, corner does, route, does he uh, have an option? Just, okay. I mean, they're running the corner regardless. It's just how they run it based off of the defender. Based off, yeah. Mm-hmm. But but the seam has an option? Oh, the, the seam, I mean, if it, he'll, they tell him to run down the middle of the goal yeah. post because that, that would be the middle of the field technically. So it'll keep him away from both the safeties, and I can adjust them based off the throw because I can yeah. protect him. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Yeah. yeah. Only kind of option on the corner is just mm-hmm. if you flatten them off when you throw it or yep. keep it high, he's trying to undercut it. Mm-hmm. So just reading that safety would depend on on if it's flat or more high. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you just kind of feel it, like the space out there, whether you're trying to yeah. flatten them out and just get on the ball now or if that safety is undercutting or playing them, you got to throw it over the top or over the shoulder. The yeah. over the shoulder is a hard one to catch, though. Yeah, satisfying throw though. Very, very satisfying. <laughs> it's like a sniping Call of Duty or something. Thanks. Awesome, awesome, Chandler. What, what, what are you most looking forward to now that you're at UNT? Do you have one or two more years? How many more years left do you have? Uh, uh, two years left. Two years. Left. So, what, what are you like just most looking forward to? And I know you're just get, still getting settled in. I know you said camps not for a little bit, uh, a month or two away. So, this, this, what, what like attracted you there? And like, what are you looking forward to as you get going? What attracted me here was, I mean, the coaching staff from Coach Morris. Yep. He recruited over to high school. I know Coach Gilbert played against him while I was in high school. Knowing Coach O, and uh, knowing Coach Davis, so being comfortable, I mean, that was that was easy. And then we're talking about North Texas. I mean, I'm an hour away from my house. I'm out mm-hmm. with my parents, so being comfortable with that situation, knowing people here who are on the team as well as students, so you know, the social life will be fine. Um, and also, I'm getting my master's right now, so um, get my sports management uh, master's. So getting the education as well. Um, you know, I had other opportunities 
Um, majority of them, they were far, and that played a factor. Just um, com- being comfortable, um, yeah. some of the living situations. So you talk about like Cal, for example. Um, it's expensive. Yeah. They don't hide it, um, and just being able to live comfortably. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not saying that I have to get a hundred fifty thousand dollars nil deal or anything, but just sure. a one bedroom apartment starts at twenty three hundred. Mm. And I'm sure it's puny too. Yeah, it's and no luxury. Per feet. So I mean, and and that turns it's a studio basically. So mm-hmm. and you talk about possibly going to Indiana Northwestern. I mean, it's snowing here, so I can only imagine how it can get there. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah. I see videos like Buffalo, New York, and they be up to their door, and they can't open yeah. their door. So I mean, I, in in reality, I, I feel I made the best decision. Mm-hmm. Um. And just what I'm really expecting is just, you know, having a great time during spring, learning yep. the system, you know, I'm, I mean, everybody's going to compete. So looking yep. forward to that because competition brings the best out of everybody. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, regarding, um, I know your first recruiting cycle out of high school, you went to Southern Miss, right? Mm-hmm. And that was class of, you class of 18 or 19? 19. 19, okay. So I know when I left my home in Dallas, and I went somewhere, I went to Memphis, and I was just so homesick. Like, I was so young, homesick, and I, I had never been anywhere besides Texas, and I, I missed it. And I would always call my parents and say, man, I want to come back. I want to come back to Texas. And I'll never leave Texas again. Did did that any anything in that manner happen to you at Southern Miss where you're just homesick and miss your family and stuff? I enjoyed my time at Southern Miss. Um, was I homesick at first? Most definitely. Um, I was eight hours away from home. I was able to drive it though. So um, me leaving Southern Miss had more to do with the situation just I was in because the staff I signed with offensively, they were gone. They were let go after signing day. So I had to bring the office coordinator and he brought his own staff and he just came to realization at the conversation that I would have to wait my turn and that would be like three years. So I wasn't willing to do that at all. I mean, yeah. at least give me the opportunity to compete. Right. And that, you know, it wasn't the situation. So I have to leave. And I mean, there were some things that Southern Miss that I didn't like, but I mean, there's pros and cons to everywhere you go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I mean, just that home feeling said the entire time, no. I enjoy my time at Southern Miss because there's people there. Yep. Did uh, what staff took over? Was it Coach Hall? Or was no. that after Coach Hobson? Coach Hobson was still there, but the officer coordinator that signed with was Shannon Dawson. Okay. And, and then, then he's he a... left, and then he was let go to go, and he went to Houston. Mm-hmm. And then officer line coach left, Coach Lousy, and then they brought in Coach uh, Buster Faulkner. And then Coach Buckner came. Um, Coach Brock, who's at Troy now, he left. I mean, the only coach that was there when I was recruited was Coach Walden. Mm. And after I left, he wound up leaving. So, I mean, and then the staff got fired after that. So, it looked like I left mm-hmm. before everything started to really chill. Yeah. Yeah. Well, definitely made, made, made the right decision. And, and, uh, especially with how you know things have turned out and the, the numbers you put up and where you are now. So, uh, what what would you have before we kind of finish and, and wrap this up? We always like to, um, at least me. So I don't even know if you really know all that that we do, but we work with a lot of <clears throat> baseball players and, and quarterbacks, overhead athletes, and so we always always like to get into like the training question, the training mm-hmm. side of things. Like, what do you do warm up wise and, and pregame routine? So, two part question, and I'll let Brady add if he has anything else. But what does one your pregame routine looks like uh so not even not like your warm-up but it's like your pregame routine as far as like music you listen to do you have any rituals you go through and then two what does your pre-warm-up look like and like do you have any shoulder care arm care stuff that you kind of go through you kind of go into detail with that okay so um let's start with pregame so it's something that i got from jay duffy taking that before the game okay because it's i feel that my body going through warm-ups and Pre-game, when it's time to play, my body is 100% charged. Because huh. imagine going through a whole day and you're just up all day and you're waiting to play a game. 
I mean, you're going to be fatigued. I yeah. mean, you can take the pre-workout all you want to see for. I mean, take all these energy drinks. I'm not an energy, energy yeah. drink guy. Yeah. This is not me. Pre-workout, yeah. I'll take any of it. I just go up on my energy. It's good. Um, and then after that, I like to eat gummy bears. Got to be a okay. hot Um, I eat a pack of those. And then after that, I mean, I go through my routine of just stretching. Mm-hmm. Um, stretching and then I like to do the, the band pulls, warm, mm-hmm. get my shoulders warmed up, um, stretching shoulders. Um, anything I can do to stretch the shoulder, I do it. Okay. I mean, there's nothing specific. Um, after that, I do my core. So I have the planks, right arm, left arm, middle, and then I have my plank reaches where I twist all the way. After that, um, then I start to throw. So uh, something I got in high school called, we call it, Coast Store called it the Daily Six. So you're standing uh, feet together, twisting your top, turning, and then you work your face to your throw. So you work on stepping and throwing. You have your foot already open, so you work on your follow through. You get your feet hot, and then you work on your movement throws. And then I work on on the run, so I go yo yo back and forth with the receiver. And then um, getting dressed. I mean, I normally go in the locker room before, so I have all my pads on you know, for my pants, everything. So I'm able to put everything on at once. Um, I will take like some electrolyte fluid, just make sure I'm hydrated enough after. And then I also drink a bottle, a bottle of Pedialyte throughout the day. Mm. Um, after that, okay, get dressed and then while I'm listening, I have my playlist going. I, <laughs> playlist is high school, so it's all the same. I mm. might add a little bit to it this year because I feel like I need a little extra more. Just, I mean, there's some songs that come out that I just can't stop listening to, so <laughs> gotta add them. Um, after that, just sit there and just pray in the yep. locker room, playing by rocker, run out the tunnel, go up to the opposite end zone, pray there. Mm. And um, it's something that me and my mother started before I even stepped into the locker room. Uh, she'll find me right off the bus and, then we'll, and she'll pray for me then. So mm. I like that. Right after yeah. that, I'm at peace. Yeah. Yeah, that's so, awesome. That's good. Good perspective too. What's uh, your um, what's your music choice in the pregame? Uh, let's look at it right quick. <laughs> let's look at it. Because I was I was talking about it the other day, and in my music, I can't listen to like anything like heavy, or I just got to keep it chill. Like just the songs I vibe to. Just keep I get it. I get a mix of it. I get a yeah. mix of it. So like okay. I have some. Let's see. I got Young Boy, I got Boosie, I got the Crazy Boosie, okay. I got yeah. Chill Boosie, I got, yeah. I mean, I got Lil Baby, I got Old Lil Baby, got Kodak, got some older Young Thug, got Money Bag, got G Herbo, 2 Chains, um, Young Scooter, Glock, and then I got Black Youngster, and then Waka, Hard to Paint. That's the last song, because that's right before I go out, so I got you. You listen to the same order every time? Every time. Wow. Every time. Does it ever ever get old? Or is it just this, this the, the only mm-hmm. time I listen to this playlist is during the season. That's mm-hmm. the only time I listen to it. It's just routine for you now, huh? It's just like it's part it's a like, habit. Just routine. Yeah. yeah. I'll I dig that. I dig that. You gotta find a routine and stick with it. Um that's awesome. Well, Chandler, real quick before we get you out, dude. Um we always like to ask what advice you would give to younger quarterbacks? So like quarterbacks that were in your, that you, the same position that you were in you know, f- five, six years ago, right? In high school coming up, j- j- just a word of advice you would give to them uh, that you wish maybe you had whenever you were 17, 18 years old in college or in high school, excuse me. Um, the advice I'd give somebody is just something I've learned over the years is the triple A's accuracy above all. Number two would be, know the game mentally and ex- play the game as you would as a defensive coordinator. Cause that's who you're going against. It's a chess match. That's good. He's going to do something and he's going to see how you react to it. Cause a lot of the times they guess, 
Yeah. After they open the script, they're guessing. That's good. Like that. The next thing would just would be for now with NILs and how everything is going for that. Be able to market yourself. What will separate you from everybody else? And that's only for them to decide because you're on your own person. I like that. That's good. That's good. That's good word of wisdom. That's good stuff, man. Well, Brady, you got anything else, man? Anything, anything to add or, or, or chop it? Any other X's and O's or geeky stuff you know to jump into? No, not necessarily geeky. I just <laughs> I enjoy listening to um, hearing you talk. Just learning from you, taking what I can, and just hopefully it'll make me a better quarterback. And I, I enjoy enjoy talking to you. Enjoy you yeah, well, well, Chandler, thanks for coming on, man. We'll definitely be, be be pulling for you, and we'll stay in touch during the season. And hopefully, y'all two will, will meet up in a bowl game or something. I can go watch right. and, and do a we'll do a, we'll do a podcast before the game. <laughs> I can give my family some Christmas gifts. Oh yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks for thanks for coming on, Chandler, and everyone watching and listening. Thanks. Subscribe. All the fun YouTube stuff. We'll see you next time. Thank you, guys. Peace.